Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I've been to a fish auction. I've got my little fish room here. I've been talking about it for weeks. I've got a load of empty tanks and I was hoping this auction would be the thing that I could go and get a load of really cracking deals and some cracking fish and fill up some of these tanks. So I've got my box down here of all the things that I managed to snag at the auction. And I thought I'd just talk you through what I've bought, uh, a little bit about the auction and its little foibles and yeah, it's an interesting experience. But anyway, let's dive right in. We'll have a look at what we've got. What we've got first off at the top is some plants. So I've got three Amazon swords, which I think were sold as mother plants. I mean, they're fairly decent sizes, but now that I look at them, the leaves are a bit brown. I think I paid two pounds each for these, which isn't a massive amount, but yeah. Maybe I should have looked at these ones a little bit closer. But we'll get them in a tank, see if we can't get them to recover. And the idea with these is I thought I'd be able to get a load of plants to hopefully restock my big discus display tank, which I'm hoping to do very soon. So if you're interested in seeing that, click that subscribe button, ever the YouTuber. These in a, a tank just now, as you can see, yeah, some brown leaves, some perfectly healthy leaves. So maybe it just needs a little bit to come back. Got three of these. Um, these ones look a little bit better actually, so maybe that was just a bad one I picked first off. Just open these up and get these into a tank. Everything's been sat in here for a couple of hours now, getting up to temperature. Almost all the tanks, or I think all the tanks I'm planning on putting fish in, have nothing else in them. So I'm just going to do the plop and drop method and get the fish into them. So what's next? These are kind of bought on accident just to move things along. <laughs> so these are some just regular standard old, well, juvenile bristle nose plex. Tiny little paid a pound. And to be completely honest, I only paid a pound just to get things moving along. The, the way the auctions work is they start at whatever reserve price that the seller has put on it and work backwards until somebody starts uh, going. But they won't sell anything under reserve, so I suppose that's good. But they will literally stand there and go, pound, anyone, pound, pound, anyone, pound, anyone, just a pound, pound. Oh, oh. I've just got these, I've got one, I think I've got two of these ones in the end, maybe three, yeah, probably two. Just to diversify the genetics of my own little colony of bristle noses, so keep things going. Just gonna move you out of the way a little bit so as I can get to these tanks. Uh, what, what's next? Uh, some hornwort. I think it says it's £1.50 on the, the bag, but again, just bought it. So I thought, yep, can't have too many plants. It's always a good thing. Lost the knife already. Where did I put it? Who knows? Um, again, cheapskate hornwort, good for raising fry, that kind of thing. Now, one of the ones I was actually quite happy about. And I don't know if you can see that, but basically a Queen Arabesque Pleco, an L260. I think I paid £10 for that. I might have paid a bit more for this one, actually. The reserve was £10. Um, but it's what, maybe two, maybe two and a half, something like that. Still, obviously, quite juvenile, but you can see the patterns and the markings. A decent size. Um, I think I want. I think I paid twelve pounds for that one. But that was one of the ones that was on the list that I was looking to get. So I'll get this into a tank. Uh, this one is a long fin, super red bristle nose, which doesn't look remotely red or remotely long finned. Well, no, I can see the long fins. But yes, it needs to do a little bit of colouring up, I think. It's very, very pale, just probably due to the travelling. Um, but look for that one. It says on here the reserve was £17. I did not pay £17 for this. I think again, I think I paid, I want to say £8. So here we've got a whole bunch. So these are, so Zebra Daniels, Zebra Daniels. Three pair, three pair bag. I might have paid a pound for these as well, a pound a bag, maybe a pound fifty a bag, I think these might have been. But I got one, two, 
three, four, five threes. So I've got 15 of them. Originally, I was buying these for my daughter to go in her tank with Professor Bubblehead. She's got a Bubblehead Aranda. Um, and she wanted to have some other fish in there as well. So they're probably going in her tank, so I'll leave them to the side just now. So they'll hold up the bag like this, they'll say, right, up for this lot we've got three Zebra Danios. Started bidding at £5 or something ridiculous. <laughs> and then it bids through. So I think I had bid £1.50 and then was out because someone else outbid me. And I think that bidding went up to like £5 for one bag of three Zebra Danios. And then they say, right, we've got ten bags of these. How many do you want? To the guy who's paid for them and he says one. And as the next highest bidder at £1.50 a bag, they ask me, how many bags do you want? So I was like, well, the rest of them. So you win the bid, it costs you more. You lose the bid, you get a better deal. Once you figure it out, it kind of makes sense, but it makes it makes winning the bid a bit of a disappointment because you're like, oh God, the next guy's going to get them for half the price. Oh, Very strange. Right, next. Oh, so these were one of the ones that I saw on the list. I don't know how well these are going to come up here, but these are El Tigre Endlers. So we've got two, so these are pairs, we've got two in each bag. And again, one, two, three. Uh, I paid three pounds, so I paid the reserve for these ones. Someone else paid six pound a bag for two bags. And then I paid three pound a bag for three bags because I lost. Ah, yeah, that's me losing. I might be fudging some of these numbers slightly because I can't remember exactly, but that's the general premise is right. Um, one in here again, reserve price three pound. These are dwarf neon precox rainbow fish. I've got quite the colony going on in one of these tanks of uh, dwarf neons, but mostly males. So I was hoping that I could get a few more females. So I've got three bags of these, which I think I paid £3.50 a bag for a pair. So they're not pair pairs, a pair as in there's two of them. Um, so yeah, £3.50 for two, not a bad deal. What else have we got in here? <laughs> so this is this is possibly my statement. <laughs> so, oh, a lily. So they held this one up. Oh, well, who would like to buy the lily? Anyone interested in this? Uh, I think I paid the reserve on this one, £2, so it's £2, and you can see there, it's got a bunch of leaves on it, it looks fine. And they said, oh, we've got three of them, how many do you want? I said, oh, well, I might as well have all three. Um, keep them in the aquarium over winter and grow them out and then put them in the pond next year. Here's the others. That looks like a dog poo. That one looks well, more of a fox poo, that one. So yeah, they got me they got me with the leaves on that one and then sold me two pieces of poo for the other ones. But you never know, they might come back. And and here we've got oh yeah, I bought a bunch more cherry shrimp. So these are bags of shrimp basically. There's five in a bag apparently. I counted at least five in every bag, maybe a few more. But they looked really, really, really red uh, in the auction. They had a camera set up so you could see the bags a little bit. So it's always a good time you see really bright cherry shrimp. So I bought as many of them as I could get. Um, I want to say I paid... It was less than a pound of shrimp. Um, it was maybe, maybe it was £4.50 a bag or something like that. And I got one, two, three, four, five just to bolster the numbers. Again, it's good for the colony breeding to get different fish in there, different genetics, and keeping the lines strong. Oh no, I'm telling lies actually. I got three bags of the cherry shrimp, and then I got these jade shrimp, which are like a really, really deep green color, as you would imagine. Uh, again, five in a bag. I might have paid a little bit more for these ones, maybe five pound, five pound fifty a bag. So I've got two bags of jade and three bags of cherries. And then for fish, that's it. I wanted to get so many more things. They publish a list beforehand saying, oh, we've got all these, these fish are coming. But I was there for five hours and they weren't even nearly done. 
In fact, I've been in here with the fish, acclimatising the fish for a couple of hours. This video might take an hour to shoot, it'll take a couple of hours to edit, and I might even upload it tomorrow, and I bet you the auction's still going on. So bloody slow. Oh, it was infuriating. So, <laughs> for some reason, Missy's Aquarium Adventures decided she wanted to come with me. And an hour in, oh, the face was thunder. I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this. So, five hours I stayed there trying to get to the fish that I wanted to see coming through. Uh, and it just didn't happen. If if it was just me, I probably would have stuck it out, even though it was excruciating just being there. Um, but I couldn't do that to the wife. And I had had enough. I had had enough at hour three. But by hour five, um, yeah, it was just time to go. So I left out some. I wanted to get a load of Celestial Pearl Danios. I wanted to get a load of different types of Tetras. I was basically looking to stock out my... Um, big display tank, like I say, for the discus tank. So there's loads of rummy noses, there's loads of cardinals I wanted to get. They just didn't get to them at the point that I was there. I also wanted to get a few, there's a few larger cichlids and some oddballs and things that I wanted to see. It just didn't happen, which is a shame. Um, so I would have liked to have got more, but I'm glad with what I got. The, the event itself, like I say, it was, it was a bit painful. It's obviously run by volunteers, so they run a better event than I could ever run, so we'll start with that before I start my complaining. But it's basically a hall, they have a stage at the top, there's a camera on the stage. Light's just gone out. There's a camera on the stage so they can show you some of the bags. And they just cycle through the lots. And I know they've put work in to try and make it as even as possible, but some lots were clearly from a shop or a, someone who's a semi-professional, if not professional, breeder. Some were from home breeders, some were just tat, complete garbage. And there was a lot of those ones where you just had to go through like a thousand air pumps. Pound, pound. Um, so I guess it's a victim of its own popularity. That's probably the way to look at it. But there's a few things that irked me as well. So, so one of the lots, for instance, was a giant Grammy. Um, and he had it in a, so it wasn't a fully grown giant Garami, but he had it in a, like a box, like a poly box like this. Just like, yep, here we've got a bit of a monster, it's a giant Garami. It'll only be for the people who can house something like this. You'll need a tank like that if you want to house it. And he pointed at a three foot tank. The fish itself will get that big almost. Um, and there was a lot of, a chick lid, some kind of chick lid. And you're like, oh. Oh, why do, why do you not know what that's called? <laughs> and, uh, lots of misidentified fish. Um, I mean, they're not... Obviously, it's a stressful thing. They're trying to get through all these things, so mistakes have been made, so I, I, I don't want to like, be too down on them for that kind of thing. But there were a lot of mistakes being happened and missed bids and missed uh, misidentified things. It's just so slow as well. It just everything is like painfully slow, which wasn't helped by like you've got the stage up there where the guys doing all the selling and the runners taking fish and everything, and then it was like rows of chairs. So I was on row two, and the row three behind me, there was two old chaps who decided to sit two chairs apart from each other, and incessantly shout at each other the whole way through the thing. And I was like, oh, it's nipping my head a little bit. Across the way from me, some guy had brought his family for a day out, just him himself with three kids that were less than five years old running around screaming the place down. The microphone with the people shouting at you, one pound, one pound. It was like, oh, my head's going to explode at some point. <laughs> so it's not for the faint hearted. You've got to be willing to put the work in to get these bargains if there are bargains. There was a load of things in there that were 100% not bargains as well. So definitely have to be sure what you're going for. There would seem to be no vetting whatsoever. So I'm sure there was people, I noticed a couple of people who were just buying pretty much everything that was cheap. So completely incompatible tanks. And I might be doing them a disservice. Maybe they've got a fish room like this as well and they've got 50 tanks as well, but they would have needed that many tanks to buy, to house the amount of fish that they were buying and the random nature of all the fish. You see the guys that are like, yep, that bunch of guys over there, they're buying all the killifish, this guy, they're buying the goldfish, they're buying the pondfish, they're buying the cichlids. But there was a few factions that were like, goldfish, yep, yeah, it's, it's cheap. Anything that's a pound, I'm just going to bid on it, I'm going to get every fish that's a pound. There didn't seem to be too much care about that. There was, there was a little bit of a fight between one of the vendors and the people trying to sell because he had tried to sell some panda corridoris, but he'd made the mistake of putting three in a bag rather than two. 
and that's not allowed. So there's this, all this hubbub and hustle and what I can't wait, oh, uh, arguing with each other. And the solution to that was to take them away and rebag them as twos. All right, well, they're all red. They've been, we clearly saw them all in the bag where there was four of them or three of them in a bag. Why does it make a difference to bag them as twos now? They were happily selling big, much larger fish in fours, fives, sixes to a thing. <sighs> yeah, so it was the somewhat random approach to the whole fish health and fish safety. I mean, I guess with Corys and things like that, they might be the spiky ones and that's what they're worried about, putting them in small bags, but it just didn't seem consistent. Um, and then <laughs> there were, oh God, the overacting on how much value you were getting on some things. It's like, oh, these are 15 pounds in the shop. I'm like, what shop are you going to? I've never seen a brown bristle nose for 15 pounds in a shop. Um, they had the worst discus side, but that's not true. They had some decidedly average discus that someone had brought along. Uh, and they were, if they were two inches, that's being very generous. Five to a bag, 50 pound reserve on the bag. That's how I get started in this, by buying something like that and going, my God, these are terrible and expensive. Well, the, yeah, that, that was not a good deal. But the overacting from the sellers, like, oh my God, you'll never see a deal like this again in your life. This is ridiculous. These would be 10 times the price if you were to buy them from a shop. And you could see them like all peppered to hell and all. You're like, oh God, I felt so sorry for the people that were buying them. Um, <laughs> so... As much as I was looking forward to this, and as much as I thought it was going to be great, you definitely, it's not a free-for-all. You kind of have to keep your wits about you, make sure you're not overpaying for some things, and, and doing your research beforehand. The lists that they publish in advance, I think, are great, because then you can go away and do a little bit of research and find out if that is the fish that you want, how to keep it. The amount of people, so two different people asked me questions like, excuse me, I notice you've got a fish on your jumper. Do you know anything about these hopalopalopalo catfish? Can I keep that with a garami, a betta, and an angelfish that I've already got? And you're like, uh, no, no. <laughs> um, which is what I mean about there was no vetting of the people buying these fish. These people were like, yeah, I love that, I love that. And you could see some people buying some really odd combinations. But like I say, they might have some multiple tanks like what I do. And again, I don't want to be too harsh on them because this is all run by volunteers that are doing a much better job than the auctions that I'm running. And there were some proper deals in there and some, some chances to get some quite rare stuff if you can stake, stake it out for five, six, seven, eight hours. Because um, it's a bit of an ordeal. So that's me, I'm back. I did get a few other bits and bobs. I got myself a little white worm culture, just to top mine up. I got a bunch of random sponges for a couple of quid. Um, there, there were good deals to be had and I tried to get as many as I could. There were some like tiny pieces of bogwood like this that were going for like 12 quid and like somebody had made a slate cave and attached some Java Firm, Java Firm to it. That went for like 20 odd quid. So I was like, how did that work? So, like I say, if you, if you can, you can find bargains if you can get along to a, a fish auction like this. But you might get screwed a little as well. Same like anything in life, I suppose. Anyway, I'm going to get all these fish into tanks. Uh, shame that I didn't get more. Um, but hopefully, but enough to keep me going. Um, you might have noticed as well in the background that we've got mega tank here. It's got some water in it still. I thought it was a little bit leaky, but... Fingers crossed, touch wood, we might be on the mend. So stay tuned, we might give you more on Mega Tanks soon. And if I don't, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.